All right, so let's talk about my solar system. I wrote a lot of this down so <laughs> I wouldn't forget anything because people are always curious. I personally am no expert on solar and I'm gonna break down how my system is connected. Um, but the first thing I wanna thank is all of my subscribers. So much of this, these past few months, would not have been possible without subscribers supporting the channel. Um, most honestly through PayPal, um, cause like anything YouTube, I have to wait until the 22nd, um, and everything depends on views. Ad revenue is such a, it's such a weird beast, and for me it's definitely a very tiny supplementary income, but when people like direct contribute through my PayPal links, it means a lot. It has helped me with gas when I didn't know where gas money was coming from, and it definitely helped me um, put aside some money to get my solar system and uh, get my refrigerator, which I got like a month or two after the um, the, so the initial solar system. I was also able to replace my solar charge controller thanks to Amazon affiliate links. And I definitely want to go into the charge controller thing in a separate video for the basic of how I set my solar system up. Um, it's not really necessary to get into that. I'll talk about why I changed charge controllers when I get there. For anybody who saw my original video about installing my solar panel, one of the reasons I bought the kit is I was very confused about charge controllers. And I'm presenting this video not as a how-to, more as a what I did. Um, because I know for me, like, a lot of solar videos are really, really confusing. And honestly, the base concepts you need to get started are super basic, especially if you're not putting thousands of watts on your roof. Um, I think if you're wiring into an RV, it may be a little bit different, but it was fairly simple to like install something in my van that was functional and working. But so much of what I was able to do financially is due to subscriber support. So I thank you all. So here we go. Um, just to simplify it a little, what we're not looking at a bunch of crazy cords. So this is the base of the system. It's two 100 amp hour sealed lead acid batteries. Um, they are maintenance free and maintenance free sealed lead acid deep cycle batteries usually run a little more than like flooded and a little less than lithium. So they fall right in the middle there. And like I said, they are heavy, but like you set them and hopefully never have to touch them again. So like if you can do a lift, which I was perfectly happy to do, like it shouldn't be too killer. Um, the other thing you have to be aware of is this is going to give you 100, closer to 100 amp hours total on most days rather than 200. But the price of those two 100s is still less than one 100 lithium battery. Obviously it's two batteries, so it's taking up twice as much space, but you have to make the right choice for the amount of money you have in the situation you're in which is what I always do um mighty max batteries so far have been great um, when I got the batteries one battery came with the bolts and the other one did not um, and I always like to talk about good customer service I wrote to mighty max I explained to them um, that I was a little curious about why one battery hadn't come with bolts and the other ones had and the packaging was a little different and I was like, hey, did you give me a new battery and a repackaged battery? Because there's some things going on that makes me question it. They assured me that they were both brand new batteries. I had a battery tester and they tested as completely full, both of them. And they sent me not one, but two more sets of bolts. Now I ended up installing the batteries before I got those bolts, so I ultimately ended up going to Home Depot to find a ma matching bolts that I could use to install my initial system. But, I have to say, Mighty Max customer service, bravo, that was a weak clap. <laughs> Yeah, so some solar experts are going to get on here and probably correct me about something. But the basic idea is if you have these two batteries, even if they're both lithium, whatever they are, if you're trying to double the amp hours, then you're going to run them in parallel. If you're trying to up the voltage, you're going to run them in series. And these rules are the same with solar panels. So once you understand it, like that basic rule, that's one of the first rules that's going to impact how you build your system. So obviously, um, on the roof, I have a solar panel. So 
this is the panel. Let's just put P up here for panel. That's a horrible P. And the panel has already, with MC4 connectors, has a negative and positive coming out of it. Now this negative and positive um, doesn't reach the car. And let's say this purple is our MC4 connectors and they don't make it all the way in the car. And on top of that, I basically need these to reach the charge controller. So for this one, I did crimp the cables. I crimped a positive line that would come inside the car. And I crimped a negative line that would come inside the car. On top of that, I also put a fuse on the positive line, um, which was probably overdoing it, because literally it's one 100 amp panel. But um, let's put a C on here so we know what this is. This is the charge controller. But basically, yeah, this is probably overkill. Probably didn't need this, but I did it anyway. So there's your charge controller. There's your panel. And now your panel is connected to your charge. Actually, um, ignore me. This shouldn't have happened first. This should happen second. The first thing that should happen <laughs> is actually do not hook your, charge, your, your panel first. Hook your batteries first. So if you're going to do this, you're going to take your batteries to the charge controller first and there's basically going to be a little symbol or area that says bat and it'll clearly be where the batteries go and, that, and you hook those into your charge controller. It'll be bare wire. You'll have to loosen up a hole with a screw, put the wire in there and then tighten the hole. You may have to strip the ends of the wire. So do that first. Sorry, went out of order here. And then with the solar panel just do exactly what I said you can create or buy extension cables it's not really that hard but this is also where money can start to add up because I bought a crimper I had the ends and I had the cable because it came with the panel but um, if you you just get a panel keep in mind MC4 connectors and wire is money um, and Will Pros re recently put out a, win um, a video about not cheaping out on your cables basically especially any cables that may be exposed to outside you want to make sure they're the proper kind of cable that can handle that um so yeah basically will pro says don't cheap out on your cables i'm just going to preach them here and also fusing things better to be safe than sorry i mean you can save some money and go like this is only a 100 amp panel um but it's better to go ahead and get those fuses all right so you hook up your battery first to the charge controller and then you hook up your panel to the charge controller. And that's the basics of charge control. I let's fast forward a bit. I have batteries. How am I charging them? Obviously, I have a solar panel on my roof. But that's not the only way I'm charging my batteries. My batteries also charge when I drive. And you may be wondering, does she have a DC to DC charger? Does she have a solenoid? Like, what's going on? First of all, I didn't really understand any of that stuff. The way I understand it now, you're basically just making a parallel-ish connection between your car battery and your um, house batteries using this device as a middle regulator to take some of the energy that's being thrown, um, basically, um, out to charge that car bar battery to share with your house batteries. I understand that now. I did not understand what the heck people were talking about. People kept talking about running off the alternator, running off the alternator, and I literally thought you had to connect to an alternator, and I didn't even know what an alternator was. So, what I did go is, I have a 110 plug in the back of my van. I actually have two 110 plugs in the back of my van, plus a 12 volt accessory outlet. And then I have two accessory outlets in the front. Um, and so I was like, hmm, there's battery chargers, just regular battery chargers that are intended actually for use in a house. And I decided that I would just use a battery charger and plug it into the 110 in the back of the van. So we're gonna make a little thing here and put an M on it. And that's your battery maintainer. And the battery maintainer again just goes with the same concept now for my personal thing I have this going to a 110 plug in the car and then this has a positive 
and negative coming off of it. This is also fused. Um, at one point I had a Y splitter was splitting with the charge controller and then I changed it so that that's no longer the case. Um, and this cable was long enough for the negative to come to the negative. And the positive come into the positive.